Alright guys, here's my review and comparisons on the Wilson Pro Staff 97 V13, Blade 98 V7, 16 by 19 and the Clash 98. Thought I'd settle down on the fancy edits so I could increase the volume of my uploads and I'll save them for bigger releases or the ones that I really like. Otherwise my frequency of uploads just won't be enough. Hopefully you still enjoy the content and the detail of my review and if you do, a simple click of the like button really helps my channel grow. You can stay up to date with me between videos. I do have an Instagram page which I'll link in the description. Stick around to the end of the video for the final overall rating for each racket. With the revamp of the Pro Stuff line, the current generation of Wilson models is complete and we'll be waiting for the next line of technology they will implement and which would likely be in the newest Clash. So this would be a good time to do a comparison on the player frames for the three biggest selling lines under Wilson. I'll list all the specs on the screen and we'll take a look at what is similar or different between the frames. The Pro Stuff and the Blade have relatively thin beams which I consider a thin beam these days, anything under 22 millimeters. The Pro Staff is more of a box beam, so it's squared off, whilst the blade is rounded at the top until it gets around to the throat, which becomes quite flat. On the other hand, the Clash 98 sports a much thicker beam, slightly thinner than the 100, but getting into the realms of the pure drive and pure aero territory. Likely because the Clash needs a source of power, because the racket is so flexible, traditionally a characteristic of pure control and feel. All of them have a 16x19 pattern aside from the Blade 1820 variant, but the Pro Staff has the lowest average swing weight and the smallest head size by just a hair. Their swing weights all average in the low to high 320s, which is nothing too crazy, and the biggest differences are basically in the flexibility of the rackets. The Pro Staff is the stiffest at 66 RA unstrung, the Blade being mid-range at 62 RA and the Clash being extremely soft at 55 RA. If you're interested in my string setups for the playtest, I'll list them on the screen. Just pause the video if you need to read through it. Let's start with the feel, stiffness and comfort of each racket. The Pro Staff has been updated with a lower stiffness rating and without countervail technology. It provides a firm and crisp feel, but string choice does matter a lot. A semi-firm poly does make the racket feel much stiffer, but I've been playing with it for the last month and I haven't come back with any soreness at all, even with stiffer strings. And so having a soft poly or hybrid setup, you can really make the racket quite plush. So as a brand of the Pro Staff line, it's quite comfortably firm. The ball comes off the strings fast and direct, and is a solid improvement over the countervail version. Though there is a smallest sense of a muted feel, which I suspect may come down to the velvet paint they now use. Federer had talked about this in a German interview, how he had to adjust to the effects of the changes in the paint in terms of feel. The Blade is a very soft and plush feeling racket, it provides a good amount of ball pocketing, but as I mentioned in my individual review, it does feel very muted even compared to the countervail, just a bit less, and requires a sharp or crisp string to balance out the muted feel. But it's extremely comfortable that you could use virtually any string and have little to no issues with comfort. But if you're still sensitive to it, your body is probably too far gone in terms of injuries or your technique needs to be corrected. The Clash 98 feels like a pillow, has some nice ball pocketing and the feel is very fun to play with. Some might consider it a bit on the slightly muted side, but it's very much in between the other two rackets if you were to compare, and in my opinion, not off-putting at all. In terms of maneuverability, all three rackets are relatively easy to handle maneuverability-wise, but you need to be at least a mid-level intermediate to advanced player to utilize them correctly. At my current skill level and strength, the blade is the easiest to use despite having the most head heavy balance and the highest swing weight. It does have the lowest static weight coupled with a thin frame and it does an excellent job with aerodynamics. Both the Pro Staff and the Clash have a relatively headlight balance so moving it around is not really a problem at all if you're strong enough. However, the Pro Staff requires the most amount of racket head speed to get anything out of it at all and it's the most advanced orientated out of the three. The Clash is really a midpoint between the three needing some ability to swing through the weight of the racket by having a thick frame to help with easy power. But for me, the 24 mm beam and the 98 square inch head size, although it was fairly easy to use, made it feel a little bit clunky in my hand and didn't suit my game as well as it may suit some other people's. In terms of power, the Pro Staff reminds me of playing with the Ultra Pro where nothing is really for free. 
and you always have to fully swing out on as many balls as you can. The caveat is that if you're used to very low powered frames, which are the more traditional and old school types, this may not be really low powered to you at all. However, if you're comparing to current modern day tech, this is probably on the lower end. The blade seems to provide the most immediate effect of pop right off the contact point. But as I mentioned in my full review and confirmed in my retest, every sense of power you felt you generated when you actually hit the ball is lost by the time the ball is received by the opponent. And it actually makes you think you're hitting bigger than you actually are. I didn't find the Clash 98 to have a ton of power like the 100, as it was harder to flatten out balls to generate good penetration. But I'll preface that by saying that the Clash I played with was strong with a dead alu power string in it, which probably affected my playtest. So if I were to rank the power levels, the Clash 98 is the highest. The Pro Staff and the Blade are actually quite similar because the Pro Staff is balanced out with more stiffness, which means it's also both slightly better than the 1820 Blade as well as the Ultra Pro 16x19. For spin, each racket does a relatively good job at spin potential despite being on the more control side. With the Pro Staff and the Blade having tighter 16-19 patterns, the Pro Staff was great in the sense of the launch angle being very balanced and complemented the spin potential. It worked hand in hand to provide you the confidence to hit and sustain the same type of ball over and over again. The blade is, in my opinion, the same or less spin than the Pro Staff, but the launch angle was very high but it works very well for people who lack consistent depth or launch angle on their own swings. The Clash 98 provided more spin potential and a launch angle more towards the Pro Staff, whereas Balance may be just a bit higher. And I think it does a better job at providing much more spin penetrating balls than it does through hitting and driving a flat shot. But I found that having general racket head speed and a good swing would reward you with easy depth. On the slice, Pro Staff had the most reliability for slice, but kind of failed me a little bit if I used a hybrid setup. I really needed a full poly setup to utilize its potential. It was very useful for when I was in defensive positioning though. The Blade is an overall quality racket that provides a balanced performance in many areas. So the slice works quite well if you swing with conviction, but if you don't, that high launch angle will take over. The Clash was good for easy depth, but the slice probably floated a little bit higher than I preferred. For control, the Pro Staff has an excellent amount of control and it reminds me a lot of playing with a stiffer version of the Ultra Pro 16x19. Both rackets are probably the most consistent I've been able to hit with as it also forces it out of you due to its lower powered nature and tighter string pattern in the middle of the racket. I think it's really better suited to high, intermediate to advanced players if you were to maximize its potential, but I feel as though it actually has better control than even a modded Ultra Pro 16x19, meaning it far surpasses the Blade and the Clash. To me, it's a slightly more user-friendly version of the Ultra Pro without needing to make any modifications at all, provided your specs are relatively on point. If you've never been introduced to more player-orientated control rackets, then the Blade is certainly a step up above the rest for control if you come from rackets like Babolat's E-Zones or V-Cores. But if you truly are an advanced player, you'd better suited towards the 1820 version, which will provide you with all out control where the 1619 won't provide you with that because if you self generate power, it tends to fly and overheat much easier. The Clash 98 having most open pattern and thickest beam is an acquired taste the balance of control to power ratio, which is kind of similar in the sense to E zones and speed MPs, but it doesn't stand out like the pro staff does in terms of control. It's around the same as the blade possibly a little bit less. The Pro Staff may come off as a mediocre serving racket and stock swing weight, but it's got good accuracy, not a lot but enough plow through and above average level of effective spin and slice penetration. These are all characteristics that are only unlocked if you have a truly high level serve. But if you add weight to it to bring up the swing weight and maintain the balance, then it actually becomes much more accessible but you may end up sacrificing some of the ground stroke effectiveness if you add too much weight. Blade has the best serving potential by far. The only thing that I thought needed was more pinpoint accuracy. Its balance and aerodynamics make it an extremely powerful serving racket that whips through the air so fast and so easy. But kick serves with its current launch angle that I mentioned has a tendency to get a bit out of hand if you already have the technique to kick serve well yourself.
The Clash probably felt the most clunky and that's more to do with my own playstyle. I know when I start to use thicker beam rackets my timing starts to get thrown off and though I thought I could serve quite well enough with it, if you're new to the Clash line completely you need a good amount of time to adjust to discover the ins and outs. It's not something that will allow you to bring out your A game easily. The most forgiving racket is easily the Clash, but the blade is not far behind. I think it's quite easy to hit with both rackets, mistiming, off-centered, off-balance. You'll get away with quite a few different selection of shots. But to use the pro staff, you definitely need to have a decent level of footwork and certain standard of technical development in strokes. Though I'd say still not one of the most difficult rackets to use being a 97 square inch, it provides a nice balance of demand and forgiveness from a frame aimed at high levels, where it's not as hard to use as some of the older 95 square inch rackets and other rackets within the same static weight range. But it's definitely not as easy to pick up off the shelf if you've never used lower powered control rackets. For stability, the blade has a good amount of stability. It's generally a step above most of your low swing weight power frames with the average swing weight relatively on the slightly higher end for the 305 gram rack. But if you're familiar with heavier frames, it's not going to play in your ballpark range that you're accustomed to. You will be relying on a balance of your own timing and clean contact of the ball coupled with the racket to provide you with good level of stability. It's definitely enough for even up to high intermediate level of play. But if you want that rock solid stability where you can just stick the racket out and let the racket do the job and absorb the pace. These are generally rackets that are above 345 grams in static weight with a swing weight in the low 330s. The Pro Staff's stability is also around the same as the blade, but because it has a smaller sweet spot, it might take some adjustment time, but once you dial it in, its stability is probably a little bit better than the blades. But if you add a little bit more weight in the head, once you get it right, it plays quite well overall and can handle a variety of different paces. But in general, you need to be very careful with Wilson quality control at all times when buying a Wilson racket from secondhand market or brand new. My Pro Staff came in at a 313 swing weight meaning I bought a Pro Staff 97 and got something that would play like a 97L at the weight of a 97, which is a bit ridiculous to me. The Clash 98 may be the most stable of them all off the shelf. A combination of its thick beam and large sweet spot really help with off center shots. I never noticed until recently though, but now that I'm using a lot of thin beam rackets, I can have a tendency to frame the thicker beams that protrude out much more than the other two rackets when you make contact closer to the edge of the frame. So just keep that in mind. Mine. Unsurprising to me, I knew that the Clash would be the best feeling volley racket in my opinion. That's because I used to use the Clash 100, which only had an unstrung weight of 290 grams, yet it had really great stability and maneuverability and touch at the net. I found the Clash 98 to be not so much different and it was very stable and had plenty of touch throughout. The Pro Staff and the Blade may seem like they fall into the same territory for volleying given their specs and ease of use. But the Pro Staff has a deceptively good stability and great touch. Gives you plenty of feedback on touch volleys and despite the stability that you may guess it seems to lack in stock form, it does a very good job of holding strong, absorbing pace both for volleys and ground strikes. As long as you make very timely and clean contact, but if you want more forgiveness in those areas, adding some extra weight at 10 and 2 or 3 and 9 would not hurt at all. First Star, as I mentioned, basically performs like a stiffer version of the Ultra Pro 16x19, which you can only get from Wilson exclusively, but it's a very high quality all around racket that performs well in every category. A racket that requires good footwork and self-generating pace to reward you with high level of consistency and precision. In fact, I think the control is actually a little bit better than the Ultra Pro 16x19. However, what you give up is the fantastic level of feel but in its own merit, the feel is actually also really quite nice. And paired with the right string, you get an all-in-one package frame for advanced players. In all honesty, I was hearing all the hype around the Pro Staff and I really wanted to find something quite wrong with it to see if it was all just the marketing or not. At first I wasn't really impressed, but then it turned out as because of the bad quality control. And after using it continuously for a full month, I honestly think it's a very high level frame once you learn how to use it effectively. Compared to the Countervail version, they are in my opinion quite different in terms of characteristics. The Countervail actually had a fair amount of power, but it was overly muted and didn't control the ball well enough. And compared to the RF, the focus is on rock solid stability 
and massive power through a combination of sheer weight and high stiffness. Though it's hard to swing, it still does a lot for you without you having to do everything. The 97 V13 is very much the opposite of both these versions and looks to help you by making it easy to manoeuvre for an advanced level racket but concentrates on pure control and feel and wants you to generate absolutely everything by yourself with a focus more on your skill and technique. Much more like the old school pro staffs. The blade is the best racket to begin teaching you proper technique, giving up some of the free power and spin and more control and feel. If you come from the Babolats and E zones and want to advance your game, this is the perfect racket to get you started. Clash 98 is a high quality tweener style frame, whilst not particularly suited for my game style, it has a massive potential hidden within. In terms of how it fits in today's racket lines, it's more along the lines of an EZO 98 Speed MP, where it sits in between the middle of everything, providing you a combination of spin, control, power, feel and stability. I hope that this was still a helpful review and just as enjoyable as the other ones that I do. Be sure to check out my other reviews if you haven't seen them yet. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.